Good morning, everybody. Myself, Dr. Shailen Mehta, Physiotherapist. Presently, I am working as a principal department of physiotherapy, Janathan Rai Nagarastan Vidya Vedya University of Dhanpur. And I am associated with the cancer rehabilitation also because I have completed my certificate course in cancer rehabilitation and lymphedema management. And uh, since last four years, I was running one academy also and cancer rehabilitation also itself in Udaipur and I used to create awareness among the peoples and society regarding cancer rehabilitation and uh, my motto is to aware age much age peoples and society regarding the cancer rehabilitation because still the cancer is the word itself is enough to fatal anybody in our society or any individual whenever they mention a new person we heard about the cancer Itself first thing comes in his mind that why it happens to me only, what I have done something wrong, God has punished me for something like that. But my dear friends, nowadays nothing is like that. Cancer is totally, I cannot say totally irritated, but it's irritable. The only thing is it should be properly diagnosed, early diagnosis and proper management should be there. Whenever you are talking about the cancer, cancer means uncontrolled growth of the cells in our body. There is a normal cells and uncontrolled growth of cells in our body. That is the cancer two types only, benign and malignant. When we are talking about the benign, it is the controlled and self lifting tumors only. It will not spread to another organ on the other side of the body. But malignant tumors are the widely spread throughout the body. Uncontrolled growth is there. So many reasons for developing cancer. Not as we can see the physical factors are there, chemical factors are there, a lot of use of the dyes and chemicals increasing day by day, then physical and ultraviolet radiations are there, atmospheric pollutions are there, and then so many inherited factors also there. Some some theories like oxygen, oxygen storage are related with the inherited mutants are there. Then so many hormonal factors are also there. People are going people are going uh, behind the hormone replacement therapy and so many others. So all these are the common vector responses for the cancer and we all know that incidence of cancer is increasing day by day. Some of the personal habits also responsible for developing cancer like smoking, air pool, consumption, and like the project sedentary lifestyle, obesity is the main cause of the cancer in the scenario because our lack of exercise is the one of the most common cause of cancer in men and females. So, Cancer is increasing day by day. Instance of cancer is so rapidly and we are talking about the India in 1996 the breast cancer is developing around in 145,000 women and uh, uh, in 145,000 women around 60% women have died because of the lack of evidence of the cancer survival. But when we are talking about 2006 the number of increase to like 45,000 for the breast cancer in India and out of that only one lake 80,000 ones are survival remaining at night because of the lack of evidence and lack of treatment facilities and late diagnosis is there. But the incidence is increasing so rapidly that that's why in no metro cities, lot of hospitals are coming with the cancer hospitals and everybody is behind the cancer hospitals only. And uh, because they are thinking that it's a more chance of the income generation and the more survival, more, they, are, they want the main source of the more medical treatment, the cancer only. So everybody is going behind the cancer hospital only. So here, whenever cancer is there, when you are telling the males, there is a more chance of the lung cancer, then the colorectal cancer and prostate cancer, then after the liver and other cancer will come GIT cancer. But when we are talking about the females, there is a number one is the lung cancer, after that the breast cancer and other gynecological cancer like uterine cancer, cervical cancer, other forms of the GIT cancer will come. And the Breast cancer is the most common cancer, that is the second most common cancer in the women after the lung cancer. When we are talking about the USA, the lung cancer is the around 50% of women are suffering from lung cancer. After that the breast and other cancer will come. But when we are talking about our country India, around 40% of women are suffering from lung cancer and 32% of women are suffering from the breast cancer according to 2006 WHO data. So, lung, whenever breast cancer is there, definitely people, that patient has to go for the any type of surgery, whether it's the breast tectomy, simple lung tectomy. And whenever surgery is there, definitely complication is there. So, most common complication for the surgery is the shoulder stiffness is there, cosmetic appearance problem is there because of the loss of the breast. Then another neurological complication is there, wound infection is there, serum formation is there, immunoformation formation is there. Pain and stiffness in the same side of shoulders where it is there. Then psychological complications, there are so many complications are there. Although complication began irritated by our physiotherapy management and other management, by the help of the a total palliative care team is there. So they are working in cooperation with each other and they want to indicate the full complication. 
So some of the complications like the wound infection, we can uh, eradicate by the proper wound care. Then neurological complication also we can remove by the proper exercises. Then another complication like cosmetic, we can improve surgical implants. The prosthetic implants are there for the cosmetic cosmetic complications. Then another complication like shoulder joint and pain, we can eradicate by the exercises also. So many exercises are there. Shoulder shaking exercises, shoulder rotation, neck rotation, neck bending exercises are there. Back stretch exercises are there. So many shoulder elevation exercises, their extension exercises, their arm rotation exercises are there. So many exercises we are performing for increasing the shoulder range of motion and shoulder joint mobility, flexibility, and just to, to improve the sensation and reduce the edema. But the most common complication after any mastectomy is the lymphedema. Lymphedema, as we told to you, I told you earlier also, lymphedema is the chronic swelling, long term swelling that develops after the surgery in any type, any name. If we are talking about the breast cancer, generally it will develop in the upper limb. When we are talking about another form of the lower limb in genital cancer, generally it will develop in the lower limb. It can develop in any body part, sometimes in the upper limb. Depends on the type of surgery or type of cancer. Sometimes it develops in the lower limb, sometimes it develops in the head and neck regions also. It is generally the accumulation of protein rich fluid which can accumulate anywhere. Wherever is the lymphatic load will increase from the transition capacity of the lymphatic system. Definitely, there is the abomination of fluid is there and it will continue to into chronic long term swelling that is called lymphedema. As we all know, there are simultaneous two systems are working in our body. One is the arterial system that used to take oxygenated blood to the cells. One is the venous system that used to take deoxygenated blood through our, from our cells to the and excrete from the body. But the simultaneously, one more system is working out that is the lymphatic system. The main work of the lymphatic system to maintain volume and pressure of the lymphatic fluid in our interstitial space. Then another function of the lymphatic system, it is has vital important only in the white immune component system of our body. It helps in the production of lymph nodes and other lymphatic lymphoid tissues. Then plays an important role in immune capacity because of the production of lymph nodes only is responsible for the lymphatic system. Then Whenever the lymphatic load will increase, there is insufficiency will develop. There are generally two types of insufficiency are there in mechanical and dynamic insufficiency. Dynamic insufficiency means whenever the lymphatic load will increase from the transportation load, definitely there is a collection of some fluid is there. Mechanical insufficiency means whenever anatomical any heredity abnormality in lymphatic system is there, there is a collection of fluid is there. But sometimes both the type of insufficiency is there, mechanical and dynamic. So that is called combined, combined insufficiency. As I told you, generally mechanical insufficiency develop in the primary lymphedema, then dynamic insufficiency will develop in the secondary lymphedema. Primary lymphedema is due to the any hereditary or anatomical abnormality in the lymphatic system. Then dynamic insufficiency due to the secondary lymphedema. Secondary lymphedema generally develop after the surgery only. It is due to the injury to the any lymph node. When we are talking about breast cancer surgery, generally it is due to the injury to the environment. Sorry, actually you need to note then supracleavular so infraclavular and you need to note and sometimes it, is, it may be double up during the radiotherapy and chemotherapy process or sometimes it may be double due to the advanced form of the cancer also and sometimes it may be dependent on edema, dependent on edema also chronic edema is also there so when, whatever second type of input device is there, there is a combined insufficiency or dynamic insufficiency whenever lymphatic load will increase from the normal capacity there is so many assessment processes also there for the assessment of lymphedema. Most common note is volumetry, topometry is there, bioimpedance scanning process is there, then data displacement method is there, volumetry is there. These all are the latest and new diagnostic procedures for the objective assessment, then we have to do subjective assessment also. For the subjective assessment, we have to do the nutritional status, check the nutritional status of the patient, skin based polarization status of the patient, psychological status of the patient. Wherever we will assess, then we will be able to go for the management. In management, so many new techniques came in the lymphedema. Surgeons is generally performing the liposuction surgery. Then some of the anastomosis they will create to reduce the edema. Then they have to go for the liposuction. Then other surgical reduction surgery for correcting the lymphedema. But when we are talking about the conservative management, so many systems are there. Like we are using ultrasound for healing purpose. Then we are using some therapeutic modalities also for the relaxation purpose. Then we are using cryotherapy also for relieve the edema and relieve the pain. Then MLD, manual lymphedema tenets, we are using for relieving the lymph from the interstitial space. Then MLLB, 
multi layer lipidema bandaging also we are using in the maintenance for chronic maintenance phase for chronic cloning correction uh, of the lymphedema then complete decongestive therapy is there there we are using mlb then hosiery elastic garments so many ibcs intermediate pneumatic compressor devices there then low level laser therapy also we are using here then most common latest method in the lymphedema technique is there in lymphedema taping technique we are using the kyrocytosis tape there we are just putting the tape on the superficial layer of skin and it will create the negative pressure because of that definitely the lymph will remove from the underlying layer of the skin so it is the most common technique technique which we are using nowadays here we are using the kyrocytosis taping and sometimes we are keeping it for five days also sometimes we are giving for one week also here generally we are putting the tape in frame like pattern the narrow strips of the and the one end is the broad end one is the narrow strip sometimes we are putting the criss cross arrangement, arrangement also like that only low level laser therapy is also one of the important role in lipidium management they just clarify the orifices on the layer of the skin because of that negative pressure will create automatically it will drain from the deeper layer along with that Manual lipid technique training also we have used so many techniques, lutein technique is speed, red zone technique is there, carrot speed technique, but no doubt the lutein technique is the most common problem, that is the real, because the low, lot of evidence is there regarding the lutein technique, and uh, it's the most common simplest technique, it's very beneficial effective also, I can tell 90-80% lipid we can remove through the lutein technique, the only things we have to put in consultation before using lutein technique, first we have to clear the proximal function, then we have to go for the next session and we have to start proximal then we have to clear proximal then we have to clear distal and there are more, two more main forms of the lipid technique is there follows and resorption except the manual lipid technique trainers we are using MLB also whenever limb shape is too much distorted too much size volume is there we are not able to put any hosiery or garments we are using MLB also for long term management of lipid edema in MLB we are always using the long stage bandage in compare of the short stage bandage because long stage bandage is helpful to maintain low lasting pressure and lower working pressure and here we want the low lasting we have to maintain the pressure on the skin for a long time so we are using long stage bandages there except this as we know the problem of the decrease the level of oxygen in the order of the lymphedema and cancer patient so we are using hyperbaric oxygen therapy also for the purpose of maintaining the oxygen level in the all the patient of lymphedema then complete decongestive therapy also using in the part of complete decongestive therapy we are using hosieries, garments, elastic stockings, so there are MLLBs there, then IPCs are there, IPC is no doubt available in all the cancer hospitals. It's the most common uh, device that we are using for the compression purpose in the as the part of the complete decongestive therapy. Then except this, somewhere we are using the breathing exercise also for the relaxation purpose, diaphragm and the control breathing exercise, happy coffee techniques also we are using. Then resistive exercise training also we are providing at a moderate level. Then aerobic exercise training also we are providing at a moderate level. Intensity should be moderate level. Then we are providing this technique also. Then except this, according to APTA, known as the Theravan exercise training is the most effective and most com com compatible technique for the all the resistive program and build up program. So Theravan also we are using for the uh, rehabilitation training for the limited of management. Thanks.